When we work with text such as this, where I set x equal to this is a sample string, what we're actually doing is creating a list. The name string comes from string of characters, basically a list of characters, and that is how the computer deals with text. Even though I don't have square brackets, I can still work with x as though it's a list. For example, print x array index 0 will give me a t, the first letter out of that string. If I do the same with 1, I get an h. Continuing this pattern, I can get do 2 for i, 3 for s, and a 4 will actually print out a space. The space does count as a character even though it isn't displayed to the screen. And there's an i, and that i is out of the word is. You can find the last character of a string with negative 1. That gets the g out of this is a sample string. Keep in mind though, the negative 1 doesn't work for a lot of languages. One of the other neat things that you can do with a list, and it is particularly useful when working with a string, is to actually not just get one character, but get a set of characters. For example, using a colon, this colon right here says get all characters from 0 to 5. Important to keep in mind, it does include the 0 character, but does not include the 6 character. Even though I specified 6, it goes up to, but not including. It works a lot like the range command that way. And the characters would be numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. H is 1, I is 2, 3 is S, the space is 4, and the 5 would be the I out of the word is. The other thing that I can do is I can reverse this. If I put the colon after the 6, this will print from starting at and including position number 6, which would of course be the 7th character since I'm starting at 0, up to the end of the string. And you can see if I change this up to 10, it prints a little bit less of the string. I can combine what I've learned on both sides. This will print starting at position 10 and going up to, but not including, position 15. I can print out starting at a particular character going to the end of the string. I can start at the beginning of the string going up to a particular character or I can actually pull out a substring starting at and ending at a particular character of my choosing. I can also do arithmetic with strings. For example, if I set a equal to high, b equal to there, c equal to exclamation point, I can print a plus b. What I get back are both the A string and the B string concatenated together. The computer will not automatically add in any extra spaces and you can see that they're actually squished together. If I wanted to put a space in there I'd manually need to add the space like so. I can add three strings together and in this case I'm actually adding four strings together. Here's the string this is a string that I specified, even if I'm not using a variable to store it. Another string, and here's string number four. These will all be concatenated together, giving me my final output. Oddly enough, I can multiply strings. If I take a times three, I'm going to get high three times. I can do more complicated arithmetic. First I'm going to do a times 2, which will print out high twice, and add that to b times 2, which will print out there twice. So I'm going to get high, high, there, there. 
you can get a length of a string by using the len command. The len command can also be used for any other array as we've already seen before. That'll give you the length, the number of elements that are in a particular array. So in this case, high is two characters and there is five characters. With a string, you can even iterate through the characters just like in a list by using a for loop. For example, this will come really close to printing out every single character that's in that string. I've forgotten one thing. Can you spotted what I've forgotten? That's right, at the end of this line I need a colon. So if I go ahead and save this and run it, I can see my output down here. It prints every single character and because a print statement automatically puts a blank line at the end of it, I've got this is a test, each letter on a different line. I can even use string arithmetic in order to create something like this and then get a number from the user And then depending upon what the user enters, use arithmetic for the start and end spot of that string. Obviously I'm going to need to multiply by three in there somewhere. And print out the correct month. I'm going to leave the answer for doing that particular problem up to you to figure out.